if you internalize that history, you can actually weaponize that history and that identity into negative attitudes towards people because you're like, oh, my people versus your people. My people did this to your people or my people gave your people this and therefore your people owe my people this. And I'm like, oh yeah. This racist video from the UK is going viral right now. Let's talk about why. Yeah, the comment section went everywhere. Let's run the clip. You racist bitch. What the fuck did you say? Go on, you racist bitch. Long story short, Andrew, there's two Nepalese sisters that are walking through their hometown of uh, Maidstone, Kent, which is 40 miles south of London, and a group of kids, white kids, surround them. They start doing ching chong. You know, there's a little bit of pushing. Some people got their phones out or mocking like, ho oh, ho, ching chong, and... Uh, this just goes viral. Yeah, this was definitely kind of weird, and there's a lot of comments about it, but let's talk about it. We got our own takeaways. Please hit that like button and check out other episodes of the Hot Pot Boys. Uh, David, before we get into the comments, I would say, man, between the girl pulling back her eyes saying ching chong, I was like, yo, is Gen Z still using this as the go-to Asian diss? Like, yeah. this this is about 40 years old. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, also, the girl's wearing this, like, crazy cheetah outfit. It looks almost insane. It almost looks like a skit about racism in America where it's like not actually real. I think that that's why the clip kind of feels surreal. You know, they're like surrounded. Um, it almost felt like 90210 or Degrassi or something like TV manufactured about it. Um, I will say this though, Andrew, is it possible that their Asian dishes, this is towards a uh, Mongoloid or like whatever quote, Oriental people in the UK is not, are not that advanced. Like they got frozen in time. Yeah, but I, I yeah, I guess, I mean, <laughs> You know, I, I, anyways, guys, let's get into the comments here. Somebody said, uh, I think the kid holding the camera might even be worse or just as bad as the big cheetah girl. Because there's these white kids over there, um, and they're, like, holding the camera being like, ha, 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 look, these Nepalese are being made fun of. Like, Yeah, they're just doing that, and I think that, uh, yeah, I don't know what these guys are doing. I mean, listen, you're ganging up on two girls. It's not a good look, man. I mean, like. Obviously, luckily, nothing worse happened, and it wasn't like an actual brawl or anything like that. But, man, yeah, I hope these kids are regretting it right now. Um, somebody said the country that invented racism as a racism problem, where do you think America got it from? Obviously indicating that America got a lot of its culture from the UK originally. Yeah, to blame racism in America on Britain is pretty funny. So actually, I had to hit up somebody I know, Andrew, who grew up in London, and they were saying that, uh, not that they're surprised by this, but that there's a huge variance in behavior, Andrew, even in the UK amongst whites that are like upper class, middle class, uh, lower class. And she was saying it's more possible that these kids in this video were like maybe more lower class. Well, it does seem like when you think of the posh London, like they wouldn't say this. Oh, no, no, my children would never do the ching chong with the eyes pulled back. But that's my that's something that they do in Kent down south. <laughs> Man, this place is like Kent, man. I don't know what's going Ching on. Chong, ray, ray. Yeah, that's and then that's when your voice gets all cockney and stuff. Anyways. Yeah, right, right. By the way, our hometown <laughs> was actually called Kent as yeah, well. Kent, Washington. And it probably was named after this town in London, if you really know how oh, America started. Man. Oh, it's all coming. It's all connecting now. The puzzle pieces make sense. Somebody says, well, the UK has a history of being racist towards other whites, even the Irish, Scottish, Welsh, and Eastern Europeans. That is interesting, guys. Never forget that white people are not only good at hating on different colors of people, they're also good at hating on other white people. Yo, I did not know that until we went to Belgium and they said there was a beef between the French part and the Flemish part. See, and I was it, like, what? See, sometimes in America, you're like, Italians, yeah, well, they have a little darker hair, a little maybe olive skin. They look, be like, nah, man, over there in, in Europe, they are hating on people who look exactly the same, but they just have, they just, they just. No, you know what they could tell by, they could tell by the accent. Because the accents names. are super distinct. No, they're, they're, hell, they're hella discriminatory against certain names. Like, O'Neal or <laughs> McRiley, you know, like. Oh, you're a McConnell. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, somebody said, uh, this is what Brexit was truly about, tribalism. It wasn't about economic independence or uh, independent environmental policies. It's just tribalism. Yeah, well, to be honest, you know, I'm not that well read on what the Brexit goals were, but uh, yeah, probably. Yeah, I'm not going to lie. In America, we might know about 0% 
or maybe less than 3% out of 100 about Brexit. Somebody said, well, if the UK was so racist, then why was our prime minister currently Indian? Rishi right. Sunak. Right. And because racism ended in America officially when Obama got elected, so you know that's how it works. Right. Uh, somebody said, well, I'm just glad to see it's not just America. For some reason in my mind, after all the social media I saw, I thought this type of ignorance was only here. Oh, glad man. to see it. It's over there. Too. Oh, man. I don't know. I think there's a lot more videos from America, and they're even worse. <laughs> yeah. In a way, there was some childishness to this one. It was very interesting. I think that's why it went viral. Mm -hmm. Somebody said, uh, how come Asians never really attack whites? But there's a lot of videos of Asians verbally getting attacked at least by white people. Listen, guys, let me. I, I, statistically, Asians are not known for attacking other people, except maybe only Asians. <laughs> oh, That's man. it, man. Um, somebody says, was there two sides to this, though? What's the background story? Did these Nepalese girls say something? Because I heard that these two girls have a single that debuted on BBC radio online, so they might be just trying to promote it. I mean, obviously, this person probably had a British accent because nobody American would look into this. That's why. It, it was clearly just a marketing ploy by two colored girls in Mainstone to get more publicity. Wait, so was this all a sketch or that sh they provoked these girls so that they could get the video? I don't know if this is good promo. Yeah. You know, but anyway. It would have been, so a, I'll tell you this, in the highly, highly unlikelihood that that's true, they did a hell of a job. Hey, talk about urban organic marketing. By the way, I'm going to leave the link to the Nepalese sister's song below in the YouTube description just to shout them out. Somebody said, you got to blame the parents, man. These mm. parents, they are the ones to condition these pick kids against racism. And in the UK, it's a native white country. It's a little bit different than America, which is more immigrant -y and more diverse. So maybe these kids just didn't get the education. Blame the parents. Yeah, and it's really weird to think because I'm like, yeah, if this, let's say this girl who was doing the Ching Chong face is only like 19 years old. Who did she learn that from? Because where is she seeing that? Not in popular media, like on TikTok, that kind of stuff would get shot what down she super said, quick. I learned it from Little Pump. He has this song. I was like, Yao Ming Ching Chong. Or she's like, yes, I, I heard my mother say it before. That's how she refers to the Orientals. She calls them the Ching Chongs. And she has to go, the Ching Chongs are in town. <laughs> Somebody said, uh, well, I was glad at least that one girl at the end was positive towards her. And somebody else said, dude, what are you talking about? That girl who comes up to her to comfort her at the end was just cheering on them on to fight like 15 seconds earlier. Mm. She was clearly just trying to cover her ass because she knew this was going viral. Hey, this next comment is funny. Yeah, well, just because they speak with a British accent doesn't mean they're smart. Because I think there's obviously this this uh, perception that when you have a British accent, which there are different types of British accents, but when you have a certain British accent, you're all of a sudden esteemed and yeah. educated. But isn't that because a lot of the British media that we're exposed to in America comes more from the royals? Like we watch like, elite you know like uh what's it called bridgerton or yeah like, bridgerton when, or even I mean, like game of thrones what kind of accent like lock stock and smoking barrels that like cockney that like that that type of thing what you in it what you think of all this that's that's a very niche market in america yeah well you know? now you got central c yeah who knows maybe this girl's dad was a soccer hooligan or some sort of uh grimy you know in it, in it. Um, somebody said, uh, the Gurkhas are loyal to the British Empire and the Queen. How can we treat their children this way? All right, David, so explain this. Who are the Gurkhas and why does this relate to the Nepalese girls? Uh, so long story short, Andrew, Nepal is a country that is like, you could look Daisy, you could look more Mongoloid or East Asian or Tibetan yeah. or a mix of those two things. The Gurkhas are a group of people that are known for being great warriors. Uh, the British came, saw that. I believe Nepal was a British yeah, colony or had some sort of contact. They sent them over to fight for England. Mm, and yeah. that's a way to get British citizenship yeah, for the, yeah. for the Gurkhas, you, the Gurung. Yeah, you even meet Nepalese people in uh, Gurkhas in Hong Kong, too, as right. well, because that was a British colony. So then they also got a chance to go over and work in... Great uh, fighters, London. great warriors, a lot of uh, medals in warfare. Right. Very, Typically very, very brave people. and ruthless fighters. And yeah. maybe that also contributed to the sassiness of these Nepalese sisters. Yeah, you know, she they was, didn't stand down. She gave her a little shove. I would not say that she was phased. Um, somebody said, this is a crazy comment. I don't even want to touch, you know, whether this is true or not, but somebody said, you know, Britain has always sent its best and brightest to war. Many of now have been killed and we have to repopulate the country with who was left over. And the leftover stock is not the same stock that we sent over. So he's blaming the current British situation on the fact that the best and brightest British people have died off or been well, killed you, in war. To be fair, Andrew, the UK did fight a lot of wars. 
How Who you knows, guys man? Let me know. Why is that? Does that have any merit? Okay. Uh, they, they sent all the criminals to Australia too, so I don't know. It's been filtered a couple times. Somebody said, uh, "Hey guys, everybody's racist. Let's not get too generalized here and try to blame the UK all with a broad stroke." And somebody said, uh, "But you know, isn't it interesting that the UK is the nexus, I guess, of the Anglo Saxons? The Anglo Saxons obviously are the most dominant, I guess, group of the past what couple hundred years." Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I mean, I mean. Obviously, not everybody in the UK is racist. I wouldn't even say that. But, like, yeah, it seems that uh, maybe they feel like they, uh, they you know, won, like this, right? this, this girl, you know, she's a, a British girl. And she probably learns all this great history about Britain and how, like, Britain colonized all these different places, right? Like, the only reason you're here is because yeah. you, you are fighting for our queen, but our queen yeah. doesn't look like you. So, I guess this raises an interesting question about, like, how much of a role history plays in people's identities and how they feel towards other people. Because on one hand, everybody's like, oh, you should know your history, right? And then on the other hand, if you internalize that history, you can actually weaponize that history and that identity into negative attitudes towards people because you're like, oh, my people versus your people. My people did this to your people. Or my people gave your people this. And though, therefore, your people owe oh, my people this. And I'm like, oh, yeah, well, I guess... Right. Now and that's where we're at, right? So let's say, for example, this Nepalese girl, she's got a great uh, counter argument, right? Because her dad actually fought for the British. So she's like, what? I can't be British? My father, like, would have died right. for this country. Right. But right. then if you need that, what does that say for an immigrant who doesn't have that story? Right? And so there's so many levels. It can get so complicated, Andrew. Um, Getting to our takeaways, Andrew, there's no real easy answer to this question. A lot of stuff is in the gray. But don't you think it just really matters what side of society you interact with will sort of color your view of that society. Like somebody could grow up in the UK and have had racism every day, almost on a malicious level. And other people could have experienced 1% of that and spent their whole life in the UK. I mean, even if this angry girl had a good Nepalese friend or a good Asian friend growing up, she's probably not doing this ever. Right. But she probably doesn't have that one friend. Right. I don't like Tukpa very much. <laughs> Yeah, she definitely has not had the food. And I'm like, I guess that's the thing. And that's why being a friend to other people is important sometimes, you know, just being that bridge. But how much know? do you think being um, like working class versus private school versus being very posh plays into this? I don't know. I mean, I'm sure there's because, some correlation, right? Because yeah. that's like, they always say like uh, in poor neighborhoods or the lower income that race can be... Uh, Ten, the tension, the racial tensions can flare up even more right. because when you reach, when everybody's like a millionaire, I mean, really, does it does it matter what color you are? At I that think point? it still matters, but other things yeah. matter more. Even to as simple as reputation yeah. matters more. You don't want to have yeah. a trashy reputation yeah. if you're a posh person. Exactly. Um, so, do you think that obviously Michelle Yo, Andrew, educated in the UK, Gemma Chan, Joe Lowe, remember from Malaysia, all educated there, they probably had very different UK experiences than the minorities growing up in Maidstone. Kent. Yeah, I mean, if they spent time more in the bigger city and an affluent family, possibly. But that's not to say that they don't know that there's racism. But yeah, maybe then themselves because they didn't grow up in. This right. Kent like like I town. said, yeah. Everybody's personal exposure to larger macro dynamics will vary, even if the macro dynamics over an average scientifically are the same. Somebody said, um, Andrew, why do you think that she was lashing out? Do you think it's because she was possibly a outcast of the dominant group? And then she's looking at these Nepalese sisters. They're pretty, but they're minorities. They're trying to be singers. They dress different. They might, you know, act like they're cool and stuff like that. And she's like, I don't like it. Like I'm supposed to be from the higher group. But I'm lower because I'm, like, big and I'm not valued. Yeah. And I so mean, it's like there's, like, some yeah, human nature aspects. Yeah, it's hard to say because I have seen good-looking people also say racist things. Right. So just because you're good-looking doesn't mean that you don't feel any pain and you're just happy-go-lucky and everybody's nice. I'm, oh, I'm nice to everybody because I'm a pretty blonde British girl, you know. Um, I We've seen those people also do nasty things. So I think it's a lot to assume you know, but yeah, I mean, I guess it could be some jealousy. Maybe she feel like, I don't know, maybe she felt like some boy that she liked, liked one of the Nepalese girls. I don't know. Maybe he was like, oh, hey, you go and check out this new song from these two Nepalese sisters. Oh, Nepalese no. sisters, I hate them. I actually have something like an Iggy Azalea type rap career going for myself. How come BBC's not picking up my single from Cheetah Girl? Um, I guess to bring it to the big, big macro, Andrew, do you see this? 
as behavior that's more common amongst groups that are more historically dominant in the sense of like, uh, I guess, you know, if you look at Anglo-Saxons, if you include the Netherlands in there, I mean, been dominant for the last like 400 years. Like in the sense of like, is that group of people more racist or is that just everywhere, everybody's racist? I mean, like this could happen to anybody in any country where they're the minority. I guess, I don't know if this helps at all, but you could look at it as a minority who is at the risk of possibly one of these like verbal confrontations happening or possibly physical, but hopefully not physical. But it's like, it's like growing pains for white people, man. They're just going through it. It doesn't mean you have to be feel bad for them. Don't feel bad for them. Are you but, saying like we ruled the world for the last yeah. five hundred years, and it feels like things are equaling yeah, I out? Mean, it feels like a loss to me. Yeah, I don't know. Some of their lives, they feel like they're getting affected. So I, well, I'm just, you know, I'm just gonna deal with it because their life ain't getting better, in their opinion. Right. Um, so they're just trying to lash out, but that's not right. But just so you understand, that might right. be right. And one of by the, the way, of course, we're not saying it's everybody or even a majority yeah. of people. We're just saying that you know it's probably a vocal fraction of people but i'm sure how big that fraction is is debatable last but not least andrew does it all come down to appreciation if she liked tukpa if she had you know the curry momos from nepal is she like even knew anything i don't think this if you made me guess i don't know but this girl tammy smith or whatever from maidstone she probably doesn't know much about asia in general or appreciate things from there if she did is she less likely to do this yeah yeah right i mean for sure um yeah, dude, if she, if generally, I would say if you generally like the actual authentic food from people, that means you've gone to the restaurant, you've been served by that person, you're less likely to do this, man. Yeah, and it doesn't mean that you're like, think that person's like better than you or anything, but at least I feel like liking one thing from people, Andrew, it takes away their NPC-ness. Because I felt like they were kind of like treating them like, like not even, you know, subhuman. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I think it was just... You know, you're going to see more and more of these videos, but I guess it was very interesting to see a group of kids surrounding them, and it looked kind of threatening, and then they were saying the Ching Chong thing, and it's just like, dang, man, this this almost feels like a video from 30 years ago, but I guess it's going to happen again, so. Anyway, Anyways, guys, let us know, know what you think in the comment section below. Um, Yeah, keep it civil. I don't know, it's going viral right now. What do you guys think? Until next time, we the Hot Pot Boys. We out. Peace. Peace.